All right, what is up guys? So I said that ever since I moved to the new channel that I wouldn't be doing any more videos on this channel per se, but then I had the idea, as you guys saw in my previous upload, to go back and continue to do Zoids reviews because it was something that I really enjoyed doing. And I didn't want to over clutter the new channel with the exact same content that was on this one. So I figured we would go ahead and just make this an all Zoids channel. And uh, so I'll continue to do Zoids reviews and live streams and let's plays of Zoids games on here and keep it just for that. So you guys can check out the previous video I uploaded to get more information on that. And uh, when I stopped doing reviews last year, I didn't have any more kits to review at the time because all of my built kits had been reviewed and I have a huge backlog of unbuilt kits I needed to go through, but it wasn't practical to go and build any of those because they're difficult to transport without breaking them. And I'm still looking for a new house right now, so I'm kind of putting that on the back burner. Uh, my friend Brad, who uh, I've known for a very, very long time as a big Zoids fan, he sold off a bit of his collection to me. And so I have now quite a few more uh, Hasbro and Takara kits that I need to review. So uh, we'll go ahead and get into the first one of those today. So uh, this was back in like June or July. Yeah, it was, it was right at the beginning of July he sold me these. And so I have a couple more kits to go through, and you guys will see that in the next upcoming video. So this one is going to be about the Hasbro Gun Blaster and Reynos kit. And we're going to go ahead and start with the Gun Blaster because it has the box with it. So we'll go ahead and move the Reynos off to the side, and we'll focus in on this. <clears throat> So a little bit of history about this kit. This is a motorized kit, and it was originally introduced in the original Zoids line, but this one didn't come out until, like, 1989, um, around the same time, like, the Shield Liger came out. The first, like, big uh, battery-operated motorized kits It was the first line of those. And the original version of this looked really, really cool. It had the same kind of color pattern as the Shield Liger to where... Uh, this light blue right here was a very dark blue. Uh, there was white undertones under here, and then all of this right here in the uh, gun rack up here was gold, metallic gold. It looked really, really cool. Um, since then, there's only really been one other or two other variations of the Gun Blaster release since then. Um, the original name and the Japanese name is the Gun Buster, and I actually prefer that name quite a bit more, so I'm going to probably keep calling it the Gun Buster from now on because that just kind of rolls off the tongue a little bit better. And uh, so the next version of this kit that was released was the uh, Takara one for the Zoids anime, in, or the Takara Tomi one for 1999 for the anime, and that one is exactly the same as what you see right here. The only thing that was changed from the Takara one to the Hasbro one is you can see on the box right here and also on the instruction manual, uh, there's two little connecting hoses right there that have actually been molded away and are no longer part of the mold on the Hasbro version. You can see right here that it's been capped off and there's no longer holes to attach those anymore. So that's been kind of permanently changed about this kit. And the instruction manual, of course, has the box art from the Takara version, which looks really cool. And um, if I haven't said this before, the box art for, or I'm sorry, the, um, the Japanese box art, which is featured on all the instruction manuals, just looks really, really cool. And I always thought the Japanese box art looked like it was ripped straight out of like a uh, Toei, like a Godzilla movie or any kind of other like kaiju movie, the way that the, uh, the color and the textures and the backgrounds, the way that everything is framed on the box art from the, the Takara Tomy model kits. Just looks really, really cool, and it probably uses some of the same photography techniques as those um, Tokusatsu series. So as for the kit itself goes, again, this is the Hasbro version. Uh, Brad was lucky enough to find the box that include the manual and the sticker sheet, and this kit has not been mutilated by stickers, which is really refreshing to hear because Usually with the older Zoids, the stickers hold up okay, but if there's a part where the adhesive has like dried up and it doesn't adhere properly to the kit anymore, it can be very difficult to make that look good. So this kit is completely clean, does not have any of the stickers on it, and we'll go ahead and take a closer look at this guy. Um, in terms of design, as a kid, I was always a very, very big fan of this design. I remember getting a little Zoids uh, booklet that had all the models available from the Hasbro line. You can kind of shop around as, as a kid and see what other models are available on the market. And uh, I remember seeing pictures of this guy and thinking he just looked so badass with this massive gun rack, everything facing forward, just loaded up with weapons. 
Um, but that being said, this mo this uh, Zoid never actually appeared in any of the anime. And it also is not playable in any of the Zoids uh, versus games or any of the Zoids fighting games. So uh, as much as this Zoid is featured so prominently here in the toy line, and it was given the localization in the Hasbro release, um, and features such a cool design, it was never adapted into any of the works, which again kind of caused me to lose interest in it over the years, until of course I had the opportunity to pick it up from Brad, in which case now I have a really strong appreciation for this guy and his legacy, and I kind of wish he was actually given a better treatment and adapted into those works. As a result of that, it's very unlikely that we'll ever see a Kotobukiya HMM version of this kit, but its legacy still lives on as an obscure but really, really cool Zoid from the motorized lineup. Um, and from a, from a lore standpoint, we can kind of talk about it. So, of course, this is a Helic Republic Zoid. The only storyline it was actually featured in was the uh, Zoid's battle story. And uh, it was featured prominently during the Dark Continent arc, where uh, it went up against some Dark Horns and did some pretty cool stuff. And uh, apparently it does have many different types of weapons in this assembly right here, including like an electromagnetic cannon or something like that. And all of the spikes that go around this guy actually do become a shield, which to me makes this a pretty versatile uh, Zoid. It could probably go up against Dark Horns and maybe even Iron Kongs, respectfully. It would be a, uh, a very unique and specialized role for the Helic Republic lineup, considering the other Zoids they have at their disposal. Something stronger than your uh, Shield Liger, probably, but not nearly as strong as the Gojulus. So overall, really, really cool. I quite like this guy a bit. One thing that's interesting is the way the motorized function works back here is you pull on this tab right here. Um, one direction is to turn it on, the other is to turn it off. So it's not a, like a switch in the back. It's actually just a lever that you pull. And I think that's pretty cool. It'll probably make it pretty easy to stop this guy from moving. But I've not put the batteries in or tried to operate the motorized functions. I typically leave all the batteries out of my motorized kits so we can preserve them. Uh, I don't want to uh, have any batteries go bad <laughs> inside any of these guys. Um, but yeah, the mouth moves during the motorized function, the legs walk. And then the gun rack itself, there's three separate rotating pieces here. Um, you can kind of see what those are. And uh, those rotate on little motorized gears inside there. And yeah, just really, really cool looking weapons there. And of course the cockpit, it has, it has eyes which are actually not translucent. They are like a solid metallic orange. And the cockpit opens right here. And the horn on the nose just barely fits through the weapons to reveal the driver there. So it looks like he's got quite a bit of room in that cockpit. He's sitting pretty comfortably. Um, <clears throat> there was one more version of this kit released, and it was like the hollow something line. It was another uh, Takara Tomy one that was released a few years after this one, and the light blue parts you see on this model kit were translucent blue. But other than that, that's the only difference between that one and this one, and that was the last iteration of the Gunbuster. We didn't have another one since then. Um, so that's about it for this guy. Let's go ahead and move on to the Reynos. All right, and now for the Reynos, which <clears throat> has a few pieces that have fallen off of it, and the cockpit doesn't want to stay closed. But we'll see if we can fix that right away. So the uh, Reynos is also a Helic Republic Zoid, and uh, in the battle story was, um, again... Similar to its appearance in New Century Zero, the anime, it sort of served the same purpose, which is to combat the Storm Sorter and to be the fastest um, flying Zoid around. And it does actually exceed that, um, making it the fastest flying Zoid available. And um, in the anime, in New Century Zero, this was used by Jamie, and he originally had a Terrace, which, as we've established in previous videos, is a very stock, very standard, very common um, flying Zoid, but this one was sort of more state-of-the-art at the time. And uh, so he actually had his uh, Terrace traded in for this and had a hard time getting used to its incredible speed. It also has a few uh, interesting weapons on it. It's got those well-placed forward-mounted cannons. And it's also pretty good at melee attacks as well with its uh, very prominent claws and talons there. Um, it also has like a radar dish on the top, and a booster in the back from the look of it. Other than that, it doesn't seem to have many other weapons, as most flying Zoids do not. Uh, I think this guy looks pretty cool. He definitely does look the most like a dinosaur out of any of the flying Zoids, uh, but still kind of maintains a pretty cool design. This is a wind-up Zoid. 
Um, and this is, of course, the Hasbro one. Did not include the box or the instruction manual when I found it, but that's okay. And uh, the original version of this kit was, again, released in 1989. And uh, it was actually a sort of blue color with white talons. It was some, some of the same uh, color scheme as the original Shield Liger, that sort of uh, almost faded blue with uh, white features instead of the you know darker blue with silver like we got with the Hasbro version. Um, so to see this in green is pretty strikingly different. And uh, this one also got a holotech version as well that was clear. And uh, it was like a translucent green. Some of what we had with the Gunbuster there. And then uh, this one also, its last and most recent iteration is the Dinosaur Museum version. There was a couple of Zoids that released under that same line. I think it was the Genosaur and the Rev Raptor, which I think are the most um, dinosaur-esque Zoids, aside from, of course, the Deathsaur and the Ultrasaurus and all that. So, um, because they do look somewhat like mechanized versions of realistic dinosaur depictions, they figured it would be cool to put them in white to make them look like a skeleton or a fossil and then release them as part of that promotional line. So there's a white version of the uh, Reynos as a uh, dinosaur museum version. So I'm really not sure how those were released, although I have seen some people in the Zoids Collectors group track down the uh, Rev Raptor and uh, Genosaur variants from that, from that production line. Um, this guy also never made an appearance in any of the Zoids vs. games, even uh, Zoids vs. 3, which did have flying Zoids, including the Terrace and the Zabat and the Storm Sorter, did not have the Reynos. But uh, it does appear in the Zoid Saga game as well. Um, and really, <laughs> that's kind of all I have to say about it. Um, I don't have the, at least I don't think I have, the little peg that's necessary to enable the wind-up feature and show that on screen. This guy does have some pretty cool features though, nonetheless. Like if you look at him from the side and you see this whole side perspective here, the molded on detail in the legs is really cool. And then all the pipes going on along back there. He's got some meaty thighs and uh, he's mostly intact. He's not in the best of shape. I feel like there's a little bit of wear and tear on this guy, even though again, all the pieces are there. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I said I didn't have the wind up thing, but actually there it is under his other wing. So let's see if we can get this to work. Nope, not really. Yeah, that wind-up motor is pretty worn out, but you can kind of see what it would do. Legs would move, the wings would go up and down, and I believe the mouth would open as well, but it's just not having it today. When you move the, uh, you can kind of see what that range of motion is like there when you open the mouth, how the wings flap up and down. And I think these hinges right here are just articulated. You can, whoops, you can pop them out. <laughs> um, no, you can actually, you know, move them up and down as you wish, and. Um, kind of position them in a way that one of these dinosaurs would be if they were, or aerial reptiles, because they're not considered dinosaurs, um, you would position them down as if they were, as they would look if they'd be resting. So that about does it for this review. So the next one is going to be the Hasbro Death Stinger, which I'm very, very excited about. And then we have, Again, uh, two new Zoids that I got this year at Anime Week in Atlanta, the Super Happy Fun Sale, as well as a Revoltech Zoid, which I did not expect to come across, but a friend hooked me up, and it's the only Revoltech Zoid that I own, probably the only one I will ever own, and it has some interesting quirks about it, which I'm very, very so looking forward to showing off. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching.